that gets my goat. Let's see. Hey, this is Rish Outfield again. And Big Anklevich again. And uh, Patty Jenkins was going to direct Thor 2. She was a woman. She and was what? Yeah, I, I, I'm blown away that she can even vote or drive a car, let alone... I'm uh, blown away that she could be a she and you'd have to clarify that she was a woman. Sorry. <laughs> we're, we're all joking here. Okay, one of us is joking here. She dropped out of the project and now it's going to probably be directed by a stereotypical sexist man like oh, all superhero movies are. Just a total bastard. Gonna turn it from a chick flick into a dick flick. Have we ever talked about that on the... I bet if we have, I cut it out. <laughs> that, <laughs> Those terms that, both. Because that bothered me so, so much the first time I heard that a movie for a girl is called a chick flick and a movie for a guy is called a dick flick. I was just like, wow, that is... That, uh, it's not really That's fair. just insulting as hell. Uh, but it and, does rhyme. There and it's demeaning that. to both sexes. But I, I think that for the vast majority of comic book fans this is not an issue because they're guys and comic books are made for guys and comic book movies okay granted you want it to open up a little bit more but i think your core audience are the people who buy the figures or subscribe to the books or do people still subscribe to books i don't think so Okay. People, well, no, you can. I don't. People who buy comic books or people who watch the cartoons or people that pee standing up is basically what I'm saying. Okay. And a long time ago, and I, I think it was pre That Gets My Goat, I told you wow. about my cousin's wife. After we went and saw Spider-Man 3, and I felt like Mary Jane was just a harpy in that movie. <laughs> she was unreasonable and overly hateful for no reason other than the script called for it. It didn't make any sense to me. It didn't seem justified. You know what I'm saying? We've mm -hmm. had this conversation. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of Spider-Man 3, despite all of these crimes that she's guilty of, they sort of reset the status quo and start back from where the movie began. And Peter and Mary Jane are together again. And it felt like, you know, two steps forward and eight steps back. To me, even though it was probably just too forward and too back. And I just, I couldn't get it. I, I didn't understand because we saw the movie sort of from his point of view. I, I mean, he's the main character. We saw why he was doing the things that he was doing. Uh, so it's really, it was really hard for me to see the, the point of view of the woman, to understand why she would react in the way she was. And so I asked my cousin's wife, who is a woman, oddly enough. What? about her opinion and she said yeah i just I, I don't think about it and i'm like okay but do think about it right now just tell me what are your thoughts and why and she's like ah, i don't know she was she was mad i've, I've been mad you've never been mad and i was like well of course I've, I've been mad i just uh well what did you think of them ending up together at the end uh, did you feel like that was justified and she's like, like yeah i mean i'm glad that they got together at the end and i said well wouldn't it have been better if she was that angry with him, if they'd kind of gone their separate ways and he was alone, like the first movie ended with, with him alone because, you know, the onus of being Spider-Man is so great that it, it prevents him from having meaningful relationships, you know, that, that don't end in tragedy because there's always going to be some dude with a green outfit that wants to kill his girlfriend or wife. Be it the lizard, scorpion. Doc Ock, Green yeah. Goblin. Somebody green. The Hulk. <laughs> and she was like, well, no, I, I'm glad there was a happy ending. And I was like, well, why, why does there have to be a love interest at all? You would still watch a superhero movie if there was no kissing in it, right? And she's like, no, absolutely not. I would not go to a, a superhero movie with Ryan if there was no love interest. Ugh. And that horrified me. <laughs> that horrified me as much as if she had said, no, I'm going to have my daughter's circumcised i was just like what wh no how why where what no if no that horrified me and i told you about it and we've talked about it endlessly but comic books are are they're for guys and they're not for every guy they're not for the alpha male they're for the underdog the studious one the skinny guy the fat guy the geek the nerd the lonely guy the the, the person that lives inside their imagination i cast a spell and it's escapist 
fantasy mm -hmm. for these people. And you know what? Science fiction is escapist fantasy. Horror is escapist fantasy. Fantasy is escapist drama, oddly enough. <laughs> and all of these genres are escapist. And, and you know what? I'm going to go as far as to say that romance Romantic literature for women is escapist fantasy, too. No, it's escapist drama. The people who are living the beer commercials or the perfume commercials or whatever, they don't have time to read these things or to play the video games or to do anything. They're outliving their lives because they're the top of the food chain. I'm attacking the darkness! <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, that was almost enough of a tangent to cut that all out, too. What I basically wanted to do was just reintroduce the subject and say that now you've gone on so long, we're going to have to end and do another episode next week. Yes, let's do that right now. <laughs> Good night, folks. Thanks for joining us. Oh, sorry. We used that joke before, I think. And we will again. Where are the Cheetos? There was another thing, uh, something today. And without today's incident... I wouldn't have wanted to talk about this for that gets my goat. It was the one-two punch of comic book movies are sexist and stereotypically male. And the following that made me want to talk about it. Something that bothers me, and, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the other, is and there was an interview with Andrew Stanton, who is the director of Finding Nemo and WALL-E. Sexist pig director, yeah. Well, all of Pixar is sexist because they haven't had a female protagonist. Wait, these are all conversations that I've seen other people have. Uh, so it's not worth even bringing up, except for the one with my cousin's wife. I know, <laughs> honestly, just between you and me wasn't really worth bringing up. The man directed the, these Pixar films, and now he's doing a live action film for Disney, which is an adaptation of Edgar Rice Burroughs' John Carter of Mars series. And this is supposed to be the first in a series of films. And I, I think we talked about it yeah, once well, we in another did. episode. Yeah, we did a story by Mike Resnick called The Princess of Earth, which is sort of a swing on that whole thing. And it included the character of John Carter from Mars. And, and that was a really successful story for us. Yeah, and I think Go check we it talked out. about the John Carter of Mars and Princess of Mars stuff at that time. The first book in this series is called... A Princess of Mars. Right. And that is pretty much what they're adapting. They're also culling from things that come later. Like there's a villain, I think, that shows up in like the third book. But they're introducing him in the movie so he can be a recurring villain. If they do more films, Mark Strong is playing him. Who uh, He was Sinestro in the Green Lantern uh, movie. But uh, in this interview with Andrew Stanton, he was talking about the title of the film. Because... They never intended to call it A Princess of Mars because... Because boys won't see a movie with the word princess in it. That is, seems to be the consensus. Which is the reason why they changed Tangled from Rapunzel to Tangled. Because boys wouldn't see something with Rapunzel in it. But if you trick them and just use some random word... Then they'll come and see it because they don't know that the girl with the long hair is actually Rapunzel. Because they're stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And if that doesn't make you angry, life will. <laughs> the consensus was boys would not go see a movie with princess in the title. Now, we could probably look up a title search and find movies besides Princess Bride and a Princess and the Frog that have that word in the title. And we can see whether they're successful or not. I'm sure there's somebody out there who says the reason Tangled made more than Princess and the Frog was because of the title. And there, I'm sure there's somebody out there that also says it's because it was CG rather than traditional animation. Both wrong. Sorry. The burning bush revealed this truth to me. <laughs> Both wrong. So Stanton was going to call the movie John Carter of Mars. And they made up a cool logo that says JCM on it that's on the trailer now. The, the, tr the teaser trailer hit with some movie that nobody went to. And apparently the pencil pushers, the committee that makes these movies, said you cannot call your film John Carter of Mars because... Because women won't see a movie with Mars in the title. Because Mars is space like and the god of war who was 
a sexist male. <laughs> I didn't even think of a god of war. <laughs> well, if that's the reason that women won't go see it, then yes, they're overestimating their <laughs> intellect rather than underestimating. That's funny. Uh, but you know what? It's not funny. The movie is now called John Carter. Just a brilliant, catchy title, John Carter. Which is, <sighs> yeah, got to be the worst title for a film. I it mean, doesn't it's not like the, it... the name is a memorable name, an interesting name. It's not like it's his name is Indiana Jones. It's John Jones, basically. <laughs> Who is the Martian Manhunter. So you just won't remember it. Well, yeah, we, we had this issue just last year when there, the, the, the movie with the great title, The Death and Life of Charlie St. Cloud, got renamed Charlie St. Cloud. I just loved that title. And I, I would not be surprised if the exact same board of directors said, <laughs> women will not go see a movie with death in the title. I don't know why they didn't do it, but that would be my guess, having heard this. So Stanton talked about this in the interview, that he was not pleased with this decision. And they'd already done the logo, the JCM, and they decided to stay with the JCM logo. But they're tests their research had told them that women are turned off by the word mars because i guess it makes them think of space or makes them think of fat guys watching star wars and eating lots of cheetos yeah and in where's the mountain too <laughs> sorry i interrupted you go on well, there was there was this cult hit on uh the cw uh called veronica that <laughs> Only men watched. I, I, I feel like this is horseshit, is what I feel like. Not, not just changing the title, but this idea that a, a, a woman would not go see a movie she would otherwise see because it has Mars in the title. And I recall hearing that the Fox executives tried to get Alan Ladd to change the title of George Lucas's 1977 movie because it had war in the title. And Vietnam had just happened. No women or respectable people would want to go see a movie called Star Wars because it had war in it. Well, you saw how that worked out. I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I think if a woman saw a trailer for a movie that was a science fiction movie but seemed to have a very strong romantic aspect in it, you know, there's, there's definitely a love thing going on. There may be explosions, but more importantly is, is feeling, emotion. They would go see it, even if it had as alienating a title as Avatar. I mean, as John Carter of Mars. Oh, wow, that Freudian thing. That's so weird that I would say that. Look, <laughs> um, women liked Avatar, dude. And, and what the F is an Avatar? What is that? Unless you are one of us, a geek, you don't know what an Avatar is. Dude! Half the audience thought it was that Nickelodeon cartoon Well, before the trailer started to hit. The idea that people are so superficial that a word would make the difference between interest and disinterest, just to me, it's just an insult to the entire American movie-going experience. It's like when we heard that Paramount was offering the option of countries outside of here to call Captain America the first Avenger if the word America bothered them. It was just so insulting and, and, and irritating to me. The movie is about a guy called Captain America who dresses in red, white, and blue. So if you do want to see it, the fact that it's called Captain America is not going to dissuade you from right. seeing it. If you're going around saying death to America, you're not going to go to see Captain America, whether they call it the first Avenger or Captain America the first Avenger. It's not going to change one way or another. I don't have access to parallel universes, but my cousin does, and oh, he cool. has told me... The same that, one with the wife and the... No, a different one. Oh. This one is a, a new particle physicist. He uh, has told me that Disney's Rapunzel in the alternate universe that he often visits to buy cigarettes made $3 more than Disney's Tangled in wow. our universe. Wow. I mean, it was, I would say, negligible difference. It got that one extra family at the Dollar Theater that showed up because they like Barbies. And we <laughs> talked about changing the bear and the bow to brave. And, and to me, that one is 
idiotic. That one is worse. That's more egregious than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, than Charlie St. Cloud, than Tangled. Because you've taken something that puts an image in your mind and is going to draw boys, bear and a bow, a weapon and a monstrous animal, and turned it into something bland and a single word. I don't know what brave means. Maybe it means courage. Maybe it means Indian scout. I don't know. But that has a female protagonist. And... Oh, that's going to do horribly poor then. Because boys won't go see a movie called Brave. Oh, oh, wait. That has a female protagonist. Especially one that doesn't have a monster in the title or a weapon. I don't know. Is Brave a better title than The Bear and the Bow? I think not, but... Now, you said that you thought that people would be confused with Brother Bear, and that's why they changed it. Do you still feel that way, or... Did you ever feel that way? I have you? Are you now, or have you ever been a, a member of the Communist Party? Uh, uh, don't don't wait camp. for the translation. There was that time at camp. Um, <laughs> See what you did there. Uh, See what I'm doing here. Huh? <laughs> I don't think I was the one that said that, but that is something you don't want to be confused with because that was a crappy. It's not like Green Hornet and Green Lantern where they came out the same week. Um, <laughs> it's. A movie that happened years and years ago. Although maybe Disney has been known to re-release old movies. So maybe there's the possibility that people go, oh yeah, I saw that one already. But it's not like there's anything similar. You look at some computer animated movie and think, oh, that was that traditionally animated one that I saw years ago. I had those guys from Strange Brew in it. Yeah, I saw that one. No, I don't want to see it again. Wait, boy, it sure looks different. With the way that these movies are marketed, it's going to be pushed down the throat of every man, woman, and child in America, and especially the children. So that long before Brave or The Bear and the Bow came out, kids would know what it is, kids would know who's in it, kids would know whether they want to see it or not, despite whatever title there happened to be on it. Plus, it's Pixar. I know you're going to be dragging your kids to it. It could be called... The human stain and you'd still take your kids to it because it'd be pixar's the human stain um the pixar's the human centipede <laughs> yes there you go but well, i'm sure we could come up with something effed up and cartoon voicey for that and yeah it'll be disney's john carter i'm sure but either your daughters are going to want to see a movie about a guy that goes to mars and falls in love with the martian girl or they won't I don't think the title is going to make the, that difference. And, and the sad thing about it is, like we said before, the title is bland and stupid. John Carter, who cares? What, who is John Carter? I went that, to high school with a guy called John that, Carter. That the guy that lives down the street, the one dude, that the funny guy that mows his lawn wearing shorts and the long dark socks? No, that's not. Oh, this is a different John Carter. Okay, well then I'm not. Uh, you know, it's, it's not something you're going to care about. Like we said, it's not Indiana Jones. Although they could have made it. I mean, you could have at least gone John Carter, colon, a princess of Mars or and a princess of Mars, make it a Harry Potter kind of a thing or something so that like they're planning to try and have all these sequels, then you automatically got the title of the next book and the next book that can be the little subtitle to go along with it. And you know. Stanton has said in that same interview that the sequels, if there are any, will have Mars in the title because, I quote, the stigma will have been broken by then. <laughs> and, I mean, to me, that's, that's naive because these same assholes that don't know their assholes from a hole in the ground are going to be saying, no, you know, it has to be called John Carter 2. Look at these numbers. People still won't go see a movie called Mars. That people won't go see a John Carter sequel that has Mars in the title. <laughs> he, he, the stigma won't be broken by that. People will know what the movie is about by the poster, by the trailer, by the TV commercials or whatever, regardless of what it's called. If somebody would run screaming from a movie where there's starships and aliens, then they will run from it. Even if you come up with some pretty title, you know, Flower Princess of Love Eternal, Disney's Flower Princess of Love Eternal. <laughs> Two, you know, the, it's the land of caring. You know, it's funny about that. Uh, we have that Disney's seen it. Okay. The Disney seen it game. <laughs> and it's so funny because every card, right? You pull the card and it's like, what movie was about a fish 
that was orange and white, and he went to find his son. What was it called? Uh, Finding Nemo? No, I'm sorry you got that wrong. It's Disney's Finding Nemo. <laughs> they would put that. They actually put that on every single answer. It would say, Disney's Peter Pan. And we're playing the damn Disney scene. Of course it's Disney. Why do you put that on every answer? They're so obsessed with marketing things like that that they'll put it on every single card that they print in the scene it game. That's a little over the top, I'd say. But anyway, sorry, that, that's a tangent that's not part of the conversation. No, it is part of the conversation, though, because do they think we're idiots? And, and, <laughs> and the answer has got to be yes. When George Lucas went back and retitled Raiders of the Lost Ark to Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, what other explanation can there be than he thought, or his marketing people thought, that people would be confused and not realize that Raiders of the Lost Ark is part of the Indiana Jones saga, despite it having the same font, Harrison Ford in the same outfit. <laughs> Holding yeah. the whip. The same sunset in the background. <laughs> in the Indiana Jones boxed set. <laughs> wow. They open the box set and goes, what's this one doing in here? And throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know we just we get that a lot and and I mentioned to you over lunch that in 89 when the Bond film was going to come out it was called License Revoked and Aeon Productions the makers of that film felt like American audiences would not know what revoked meant and so they retitled it to License to Kill and you know License to Kill is probably a better title because it's actiony and it's got uh -huh. kill in it or whatever but their reasoning it's so insulting. You know, again, what's an avatar? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sorry. It made $2 billion. Where were those folks when they made Quantum of Solace? They're, oh, my gosh. I, how did I not think of that? License Revoked is 872.4 times better a title than Quantum of Solace. Yeah, I, I still don't know. And I've seen that movie. Quantum of Solace has nothing to do with the movie Quantum <laughs> of Solace. And... Oh, just what an unwieldy, terrible, awful, yucky title. My friend Jeff's a super James Bond geek, and he thinks that Skyfall is a bad title. After Quantum of Solace, nothing can be a bad title. Right. Quantum of Solace 2 Electric Boogaloo is slightly better. <laughs> and those people will but say... But the Tina Turner song where she sings, It's the Quantum of Solace, was remarkably good. Well, it takes a big man to admit that, sir. <laughs> It was Little Richard, actually. Oh. Because somebody somewhere is going to say, well, we, we made the right decision on Quantum of Solace because it's the highest grossing James Bond movie ever. But everything's the highest grossing movie ever. <laughs> Everything is because things cost so bloody much now. And you know what? Skyfall is going to be the highest grossing James Bond movie ever. How do I predict this? What does my crystal ball say? Well, tickets are going to be $2 more a piece than they were when Quantum of Solace came out. And there's more theaters. Well, this one will be in 3D. It's, it'll probably be in 3D. Too, so you have to actually pay $8 more per ticket. Uh, there's a lot of art that goes into titling a movie, especially a James Bond movie. Because some of these just have really, really cool titles that evoke, that, that put you in the mind of action adventure or sex or danger. And Quantum of Solace, I don't know what that puts me in the mind of. I, math, I guess. Yeah, makes me think but, of the Mandelbrot set. Maybe that was the song. It wasn't Tina Turner. In fact, it was Jonathan Colton singing Mandelbrot set. I want to cast Magic Missile. To be continued. Can you say continued? Continued. Can you say continued? To be continued. Say to be continued. 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 <laughs> okay, I'm done. Okay. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is. Get out. Did you hear a noise a minute ago? It sounded like a cat jumping against the window? It did, but I thought it might be the heater clicking on or off. The cat is in the bedroom, so what? The cat's in the cradle. In the silver spoon. Okay, sorry, go oh, on. Boy, boy, boy. Harpy.